everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Week in Review, a series where we talk about all the videos we did over the past week, give you short summaries of each one, and then if you want to know more about each of these videos, just check the description of this video and you'll find the links to them. So ready, set, let's go. Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia and here's what I did last week. So I did another Unsung Gems with the letters uh, V and W combined. So make sure you check that out. And then I reviewed a couple of things. So I reviewed Nile Artifacts, which I rate a 6 out of 10. This is a uh, one of those one-way road kind of games. You move along your little ship, collect cards, and then turn them in to score victory points. It's a little by the numbers. There's not a lot of surprises along the way in this one. But it is a gorgeous design, both in production and in, in playability. And I think it would work well for a mixed age group. If you're looking for something that introduces that mechanism without a lot of bells and whistles, this is, uh, this is probably the one to go for. I reviewed Mandragora, which I rate a 7 out of 10. This is a Harry Potter-esque um, potion or, or ingredients for potions. You're collecting those things. Uh, you, sometimes they'll be face down, so you're risking those. Sometimes they're face up. And then triggering spells. You are going to be penalized at the end of the game for holding too many leftover things. You have to mind uh, that you're not hoarding things either. Some hand management in there as well. I like it. Very attractive game. Very simple game. Not a great amount of replayability, perhaps. The spells uh, that are sitting on the side of the board that you are triggering aren't that diverse. And there's not that many of them. But the gameplay is engaging. And for a theme I don't really like... This one manages to make me uh, have a great time. So, and then lastly, I reviewed, along with some of the other folks here, Libertalia Winds of Gale Crest, which I rate an 8 out of 10. Same thing I gave Libertalia, by the way, back, uh, you know, when that came out. This is a nice reprinting, reworking of Libertalia with more content. That's the main thing they managed to do well here, is give you more characters, more special abilities. On the flip side of that, and the reason this isn't, necessarily higher than the original game. I'm not a huge fan of the new look. I think it's a little too uh, cartoony, too vibrant, and I don't like the graphic design so much. I think uh, the game feels a little prototypey in its look, graphical design look. But it's a solid game. I do enjoy Libertalia, and this retains that core, that core mechanism, right? The, the central ideas of the original game, which are very good. So there you go. That's it for me. I'm Z Garcia. See you on the next one. Hey everyone, I'm Liz Boccolini. This week I reviewed Summer Camp, which is a game where you and your opponents are all trying to earn badges for different activities that you're doing at Summer Camp. And whoever's got the most victory points at the end of the game wins. I gave this one an 8.5 out of 10. Hey everybody, Christy here. This week I took a look at two games. The first one is the, an expansion, actually, the Taverns of Tiefenthal expansion called Open Doors. Uh, it is okay, I give it a 6 out of 10. It has four modules in it. And I really only solidly like one of the modules, I would say, and the other three are somewhere between hit and miss to meh, not even good. So, for an expansion for a game that some people are going to love, but I don't love, this doesn't make me love it anymore. So it sits at a six. You might enjoy it more than me. Go watch the review, see if you want it or not. Uh, and then the other game I reviewed was the Foursquare's review of Libertalia Winds of Galecrest. I give this game a 7.5. I think that it is solid, it's good, it's fun, it's quick. Uh, I prefer it at either the higher player counts or actually solo. We'll talk about a solo review of it later uh, on the channel. But as the uh, as the basic game, I think it's I think it's solid and it's fun. It's not as mean as I anticipated it to be. But there's something lost a little bit, I think, of the piratey nature with this particular printing of it. Uh, but solid fun game for larger groups, not as good for like two player. So 7.5 for Libertalia Winds of Galecrest, and that's my week. Hey everybody, Blake here, and this week I took a look at Kratia Wild Hunt Festival, a JRPG inspired cooperative boss battler for one to four players. Easy to teach, easy to play. If you're into JRPGs, definitely give it a look. If not, maybe not. For me, it's about a 6.5 out of 10. Okay, so first of all, I took a look at, well, I did five short, not sweet reviews. Well, one of them was okay, but the rest of them I did not particularly care for. Piled all that into one video. You can watch those. One I gave its own video to was Dune Betrayal. I know a lot of people like Dune, especially with the cool new movie that came out. But this just felt like a half-hearted social deduction game. 
you don't really know a lot of information. There's a lot of technical rules to follow. It just wasn't very interesting. I took a look at two roll and write style games. The first one is actually a play cards and write, explore and write, if that's what it's called. Isle of Cats, explore and draw. Uh, this is based on Isle of Cats. In fact, it's almost the same game in many ways, except it's you're drawing with markers and stuff. So if you want a portable version, it's a lot of fun. Seven out of ten. Splitter. This is a the roll and write I'm talking about. You roll two dice, put the numbers on both sides of kind of a line in the middle, and then you're trying to make groups of numbers. It's really simple, but sometimes simplicity is all you need. Seven out of ten. Brick and Mortar, a very fun economic game. Uh, you're not, if you don't like economic games, move on by. But this one where you're buying and selling goods and stores and controlling the supply and demand, and there's so many different kinds of stores in this game, very fun. Eight out of ten. Dodo's Riding Dinosaurs. This is Mario Kart, the board game. Well, it's dinosaurs, not Mario Karts, but it feels that way. You're racing around a board as fast as you can and throwing, dropping, flicking things at each other along the way. Great components, super fun, 8.5. They did a four-square review of Libertalia. I did a comparison video, but I played the new Libertalia and I really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun, so 8.5 out of 10. And let's see, then I did, we did uh, put up our top 10 uh, list that we recorded at Dice Tower West in which we said 10 things that every good game store should have. I did a couple more looks at some Dice Tower shelves in our library. We did a crowd surfing, board game breakfast, and a Q&A. Lots of videos for you to check out and even more are coming next week. Until then, I'm Tom Bass and this has been Week in Review on the Dice Tower.